Hi, it's MJ Calloway here coming from my tiny bounce up studio. And today's conversation is, is with Corey Wamsley. Corey, did I get that right? <laughs> yes, you did. Awesome. So Corey is our special guest today with our conversation relating to the book 21. And that is not the number 21, but 20 W-O-N. Now, Corey, before we get started, because you have a very intriguing business, may I share a little bit about you with our audience? Yeah, please do. Awesome. Thank you. So a little bit about Corey. Corey helps professionals tell their transformational stories through brilliant books that help them cultivate relationships, make change they want to see in the world, and reach their bigger business goals. Also, she is a best-selling author of the Spark Method, how to write books, how, how to write a book for your business fast. And I do have to ask you about that as we get started. The other thing that's interesting about Corey is she has published seven fiction books, including one with her daughter, London, who was five years old at the time. Now that has to be interesting. So Corey, welcome. Thank you. Now, I would love to hear just a little bit about working with a five-year-old because five-year-olds <laughs> could be a little, they could be a little bit stubborn, but so can professionals. And you work with a lot of professionals too. So share that. What was it like working with your daughter? Um, it was really interesting. She actually, uh, you know, she's used to seeing me work from home. I've been working from home for several years now. And she would come in the office and see me working with authors. Um, she'd greet them on the screen if we're doing a, a live call. And so she was really used to that process. And she has a stuffed monkey that she has carried around. She's eight now, she still carries monkey around with her. She came in the office one day and said, I wanna write a book and I want it to be about monkey coming to life and granting wishes. And I said, well, that's a fantastic idea. So I just backed it up a little bit and said, all right, well, let, let me ask you questions because Authors always have to ask questions when they're writing, figure out what's going on, what kind of challenges Monkey has to face, and who's in the book, um, how we overcome the challenges, and those kind of things. And it was a ton of fun working with her on it, and it was a nice time for us to you know, get together and do something special together. Oh, absolutely. And if you can share a transformational story about a monkey with a five-year-old, <laughs> you can definitely do something with professionals who would have a bigger scope of a transformational story. So I'd love to ask, how did you get started with what you call the SPARK method? Well, a lot of that came from my own experience writing books. I started out writing novels um, and I didn't have anyone training me to do it. I just knew that I had this huge drive to tell stories. And I sat down, um, took months and months and months to write my first one. And when I finished it, I realized it was a mess. So I had to go back through and figure out, okay, what did I do that I wanna change? Um, is this moving? Uh, you know, is this going to be interesting to the reader? Like all these questions, you know, there's the questions again, um, all these things that I knew needed to be adjusted in the story. So it took way longer than it really should have. And doing that, I figured out how to write, you know, increasingly better with each round. And by the time I got through four or five novels, I had a pretty good system down. And then I started working with uh, professionals and finding out what their needs were and combined all of that in and came up with a really easy way for people to work through um, telling their transformational story, getting it across the audience in a way that connects and you know, being able to publish their own books. So what is the difference between writing fiction and nonfiction? Like what is the key to making both of those work? Because they're two entirely different processes. Well, for what I do, a lot of the nonfiction actually, you know, is driven by a story. So there's a lot of the same processes there. You have to know why you're actually telling the story. You don't want to mm -hmm. sit down and start telling something and then be like, you yeah, know, what, what does the reader want to get out of that? And it's the same thing with fiction. Um, if I'm talking about something that happens in one of my fiction books, I don't want to go off on a tangent talking about somebody's shoes if it has nothing to do with the actual story. So there's a lot of the same sort of ideas that go into both types of books. 
And what do you see as the biggest mistake someone would make in sharing their nonfiction story? Um, as far as what they're writing? Mm -hmm. What they're writing. Yeah. I think uh, one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they just dump it all out, mm -hmm. um, which is fine for a first draft. Absolutely write a messy first draft. I always tell people they have permission for that to start with because you have to have something down so you can work on it. But if you keep every single thing, um, you know, a lot of people are kind of scared to cut stuff out. They don't know what's not important. They don't know what is more important. They don't know where to embellish or where to um, kind of scale back. And I always like to tell people, it's basically like if you have a camera and you get to show people, you know, the photos of your house that you want to share, you probably don't want to show them your laundry room. You probably don't want to show them, you know, your hamper or under your bed or, you know, your messy playroom or whatever. There are certain parts of your house that you want to show them and you have to know what to share to be able to curate that experience. It's the same thing with a book. You know what to share to be able to guide the reader down that path to where you want them to go. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Now, you are part of this book project, but mm -hmm. you have two roles in the book project. So as a contributor and then also as the writing coach. So first, can you share what let's talk about since we're talking about writing let's talk about as a writing coach how did that work with this entire book project well it's a little different from trying to coach one person at a time um, so basically <laughs> i'm working with kelly commander um, and telling her you know this is the next step this is what we need to be doing and making sure that she's on the right timeline i helped her um, at the very beginning when we were talking about you know who we want to be as as a part of the book, what we need to tell them, um, how we need to guide them on writing the book, because like you and I have both written books before, but many of the authors are new authors. So they might not have even written a blog post, let alone a chapter for a book. So we had to know, um, she had to understand what, what part she needed to play in this whole process. And also like she's friends with a lot of other people. So I had mm -hmm. to say, hey, you know, you need to put your foot down here, or these are some things you could tell people to really, um, you know, bring out their story because sometimes even sharing a story with friends, if it's something you aren't sharing openly, you might be a little nervous passing your chapter off to the person who's handling that project and, and say, oh, you know, somebody might be judging me. I don't want her to think badly of me. Um, so there's a lot that goes into that. And it also makes them vulnerable. Mm -hmm. you know. So there could be places where they haven't shared, because you had mentioned if they haven't shared, if they haven't shared now all of a sudden for the first time, they are sharing something very personal to them makes them mm -hmm. vulnerable. So finding a way to be able to get that out. And it's awesome that Kelly had you behind the scenes there in order to help her do what she needed to do. Now you have a method for it. And even through this process with Kelly, did you use the SPARK method? Yeah, um, my book, The SPARK Method is a really boiled down, simplified version of what we do. Um, mm -hmm. But for my coaching programs, yeah, it's it's basically the SPARK method. It's walking through that same process. Um, plus, I give a lot of storytelling details um, when I'm working with somebody as their, their coach. Um, I'm helping them with what they need to tell their specific writers. So, you know, it is a little bit different between reading the book and actually being coached. But basically, yes, it's it's the SPARK method. Awesome. So with it, now you were part of the book or you are part of the book as a contributor. So let's go back to 2020 because the book is about women who overcame challenges during 2020 and they won. They actually became winners, you know, in the game of life, let's say, or, or in the game of the pandemic life. So what was your aha moment during 2020? Well, <laughs> we had, um, I, I wouldn't say that we had a really unusual challenge here because parents clear across the nation had their kids sent home um, and suddenly had to fill the role of, you know, everything we had been doing and also stepping in and having to teach cer certain things, um, having to, you know, calm your kid down and be like, okay, you have to do this. You're required by law to be in school. Um, 
it was really challenging overcoming that and, you know, having my husband home from work and trying to, you know, do my thing and stay in my lane and then also be like, oh, everybody else is here too. Now I have to teach them all the stuff that I had to learn as an entrepreneur, you know, setting boundaries around your time and around your space, um, knowing, hey, these are my responsibilities. Maybe this isn't something over here that I need to worry about right now. So my big aha was um, probably a couple months or not, Maybe it was a couple of months in when it was continuing. You know, we initially thought it was going to be a couple of weeks that the mm -hmm. kids were home. And as things progressed and I was like, OK, you know, now I got to step into a role of taking everything I've learned in my entrepreneurial career, everything I've been working with my coaches on and, you know, give that knowledge to my kids and my husband, too. And there were times that, you know, my husband was pacing around the house, I think in the chapter I said like a caged animal because he's very used to being at work. He's used to tackling these problems. And all of a sudden here we all were in this situation that no one knew what to do. Mm -hmm. And I had to give him tools like, okay, you know, I'd like, I'd like you to journal, <laughs> like kind of take charge and say, I'm going to be everybody's coach and I'm going to walk you through this and step into that bigger leadership role myself. So I, I think that was probably my biggest aha of the year was knowing Hey, I've been doing all this work to begin with. Now it's time for me to share it with my family. Yes. And you're right. You and how many other thousands upon thousands of parents have to go through the same thing. Now, what is you seem to, because you had a process for working with your clients and you were able to pull that into your family, what tips or strategies or tactics would you share with other parents to help them get that under control because it doesn't look like that's going away anytime soon. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> um, um, I, I think the biggest thing is to give yourself and your family a lot of grace because mm -hmm. it, it's not going to be perfect and everybody's adjusting. The teachers are adjusting. The kids are adjusting. They miss their friends. Um, like I miss my friends. <laughs> and, you know, everybody is just trying to navigate what, you know, got dropped on us all of a sudden. Um, change isn't easy anyway, but especially when it's unexpected. I mean, we had no time to prepare for this. It was just all of a sudden, you know, oh, kids are going to be home. Um, lots and lots of grace, lots of planning ahead, lots of uh, rest and, you know, trying to bring in more joy. We, we play a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Even during the day, you know, we'll we'll take a break, and if my kids are on their lunch break, I'll I'll be silly with them. I'll go in the playroom and we'll play dolls, or we'll build, or do a game. So just lots of uh, just trying to navigate it with the least amount of stress possible. So what would be something a tip that others, either entrepreneurs, business owners, or parents, could actually implement to help them start laying a foundation? for systems because you seem like a system person. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, I do like systems. Um, I think the way I operate is to look at what my end goal is and to kind of um, like deconstruct or reverse engineer it and work backwards and say, you know, this is where I want to end up, you know, just like driving on vacation. This is where I want to end up. This is where I am work backwards and see what the steps are that you need to get there. Um, there are going to be small, you know, milestones along the way. There are going to be rest stops. There are going to be, um, you know, whatever it is that you need to call it to make sure that you're lined up and on a timeline. But having a system in place for everything that is a repeatable sort of thing is so helpful. And then you get used to that and your brain loves patterns. So you're just going to keep running that pattern over and over and over. Sure does. And I love the word pattern. That sounds so much, I don't know, easier to adjust to than a system, mm -hmm. saying a pattern. Now we're coming to the end of our time together. Is there something that I have not asked you that you would love to share with our audience? Well, <laughs> I think we've covered a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I, I just really enjoy being able to bring out people's stories and I've worked with some fascinating people. So, you know, being able to do this again and with such a large group has been 
an amazing thing for me because a lot of these women have stories that I haven't heard and to be able to showcase them and help some of them who, you know, may not have even thought to be authors become authors. Um, that's just something that I really, really enjoy. Uh, which is so fabulous. What I hear, and you probably hear this a lot too, is whenever I do talk about being an author or, or any of my books, I hear time and time again, oh my goodness, I always wanted to write a book. I always mm -hmm. wanted to write a book. So people are very, you know, I think that's a goal that a lot of people have and not everybody acts upon. Mm -hmm. And this doing it in a small chunk, one chapter to get started is a great way to get started as an author. So thank you for doing that, not only for our 21 women, but for others that you do it for. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's it's really interesting because like when we were growing up, we didn't look around and say, oh, I see authors everywhere. And now, like, I mean, my kids are growing up meeting authors. They know I'm an author. <laughs> my daughter walked in and met you. You're an author. And it's just so wonderful that people know that this is an attainable thing. And it's so much more viable today than it was 20 years ago. So we're all fortunate with where technology has come in order to be able to be published, which is an awesome thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now, Corey, how can people get a hold of you if they would like to get a hold of you? Um, I'm on Facebook. So if you search Corey Walmsley, I'll pop up. Um, I also have a free Facebook group, Write That Book, Build Your Business. And everybody's welcome to join that. Or if you want to head to my website, it's CoreyWamsley.com. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for being on our conversation today. Now, Thank this you. Is, you're quite welcome. This is MJ Callaway signing out. And remember to have a bounce up day.